Hey gearheads and welcome to Garage Talk. I'm Corey and that is the refreshed 2023 Subaru Ascent three row SUV. Subaru's proper and only real three row SUV. And in this video, I'm gonna give you a quick tour of this Onyx edition. Stay tuned. First thing is first, I wanna say a huge thank you to Jeremy Jones and the team at Pelche Subaru here in Tyler, Texas. If you wanna make this three row SUV yours or one just like it and are in the East Texas area, come see Jeremy and the team at Pelche Subaru. Tell them GT Garage Talk sent you. But let's take a look at this one. First, starting under the hood. This gets the same 2.4 liter turbocharged boxer four cylinder engine that comes in pretty much every other premium Subaru product. Yeah, this gets a four cylinder. So a three row, very large SUV with a 2.4 liter turbocharged boxer for making 260 horsepower. And it gets decent fuel economy for, again, being such a big crossover SUV, 19 city, 25 highway, 21 combined on the window sticker. But you can see, being that it is in a big vehicle and it's a rather small engine, it's actually like down in there. It, it's definitely nestled in, that's for sure. And that comes into play here with all the plumbing for the airflow to get to that intercooler on the top. It, it just seems very massive to me but it all helps getting air and forcing air down in to that intercooler from the front, from the grill. Just making sure that it gets that air into the engine and the intercooler to make sure this thing stays cool and powered to get this large vehicle down the road. So closing the hood that was held up by a prop rod, something that's kind of interesting to me here at this premium price point of essentially $43,000 with this three row Onyx edition of the Ascent SUV. Very interesting point, but we can truly look at the new styling for 2023. And it's a little hard to tell on this black one, especially with the grill being black on, you guessed it, the Onyx edition, but you get a much larger, more prominent grill that reaches down lower into the front of the vehicle helps get air to that radiator back behind and definitely has a menacing presence on the road. Get LED headlights, running lights, fog lights, but incandescent turn signals just above that winged Subaru grill there. So very interesting and unique styling. A lot of functional air bits up front here, but right above the fog light there, yeah, unfortunately that is all fake but you can see a very handsome SUV from a Subaru, much better looking than their last attempt with the B9 Tribeca, which bless its heart was ghastly when it came out, later to be refreshed and drop the B9 name. It has some similarities with this Ascent, but it's been a while since we've seen a proper three row SUV from the Subaru brand. And this one is a very nice entry. It's about time, you know, people uh, have been clamoring for these size vehicles for quite a while. And you know Subaru's shtick is love is what makes a Subaru a Subaru. They have a very faithful following. So those wanting a three row SUV had to wait until this thing came out. Part of the Onyx edition are these black 20 inch wheels. Uh, wrapped in, I'm trying to see the, the brand here, but uh, wrapped in 245.50R 20 inch rubber. And they're nice. They're not particularly off-roady, though this version does come with X mode, hill descent control, you know, all the off-road bits. They do not offer an off-road wilderness version, though I think that would be really cool but this one does offer over eight and a half inches of ground clearance. It is rather capable, but if you plan on doing some serious off-roading in this, yeah, those uh, Falcon tires, they're gonna have to be upgraded. Those are really more 
on-road, multi-terrain, not really all-terrain tires. And if, if you're getting serious about going off-road, you'll want to upgrade those. But you can see here from the profile, it is much taller than any other Subaru vehicle. And that translates to space on the inside, and it is plenty roomy. You can see it kind of reminds me of the profile of a Honda Pilot, the outgoing model, not the new refreshed 2023 20, or 2024 model, but very handsome styling. Doesn't necessarily scream a Subaru here from the side. That's neither a good thing nor a bad thing. It's just what I've noticed. Moving around back here to the back, you can see this is where it looks more like a familiar Subaru. Got Forster-esque taillights back here on the back with that C look on the hatch. But you can see, even though we have what look to be LED taillights, the turn signals are still incandescent. So again, at a vehicle priced essentially at 43 as this one sits, you'd kind of expect more LED lighting, but I'm, I'm not really knocking it for that. This is Subaru's real first attempt again at a big SUV. This does come with Subaru's symmetrical all-wheel drive as standard and a really cool Onyx Edition badge here. So while you can get Onyx Edition, say, uh, Outback wagon versions of the vehicle, uh, you cannot get a wilderness version of this. So I, I would like to see the wilderness sub-brand brought to more vehicles outside of Forester and Outback, but that's just me. You can see down below we get this massive panel here that covers up a trailer hitch or a potential trailer hitch spot. We do get backup bumpers, uh, backup sensors in the bumper, and dual exhaust back here in the back. We do have a power opening rear hatch, and being that this is a three row, with that third row up, room is kind of tight back here. So you can see this is our largest piece of luggage, and I have to put it with the base of it here in the middle, because if I had these wheels over to the side, the hatch would not close with that back seat up and that back seat does recline so it is sitting more upright even to get this in just like this i know some friends that have an ascent and travel with family and they've opted for a Thule roof rack so if you're planning on bringing a lot of stuff with you as well as people it's a little tight back here i couldn't find official numbers on subaru's website but if i can i will put them on the screen of what the space is behind this third row. Subaru only quoted what is behind the second row and if you fold the second row flat. But I'm gonna pull all of these out to show you some features of the back, back here in this Subaru Ascent because as I mentioned, that back seat does fold down, but you do have some false a false load floor with some storage down here. You can see that is a nice hiding place for the retractable cargo shade, which does mount if you have the third row folded and can cover all your luggage back here in the back. And if you don't have this in place, you have quite a bit of additional storage down here. I could probably fit my backpack down here, but uh, yeah, pretty nice storage back here. And then your instructions for getting to that spare tire right over there but we close this you can see there is this little panel here because you need it to open up to get into that last little bit uh, for getting that sunshade out or cargo shade but folding the rear seat you can see it does recline pretty good we'll talk more about that when we get inside but they are a manual folding 60 40 split they're pretty easy to fold forward and now we get a good amount of storage space back here. You can see it does fold rather flat and makes for a very good uh, load floor. And like I said, Subaru claims 42.1 cubic feet behind the second row. If you fold the second row down, you get uh, 72.8 cubic feet of storage space. So very ample room back here and then I like this little addition here so you can tuck the seatbelt away if it's not in use. You can see we've even got that for the second row if you fold those flat. And then if you need somebody to ride back here, very simple to pull these up 
and back into place. And you can see there is the most upright, most luggage friendly storage spot. And yeah, you can get more stuff in here this way. And of course you do have top tethers all the way across back here in the back and a hatch mounted button to close it. Before we get into this one, I did want to show you the key, typical Subaru key. It is a proximity key, nothing really special about it. It's much like every other one, lock, unlock on the Subaru button here, hatch release and a panic button. But because it is a proximity key, you can just keep it in your pocket and walk up to the vehicle. You can lock it with these two little ridges right here. And when you lock it, nothing really happens to the mirrors, but it does beep to let you know that it is locked. And then you can just reach behind and it unlocks opening the door and you can see the special interior for this Onyx edition. I love, you know me and bright colors, I love the bright green contrasting stitching and the two-tone StarTex synthetic uh, seating material here. This, it, not leather it isn't ventilated so you, you know or perforated so you know it's not ventilated but yes i absolutely love this green accent stitching and the two-tone it it just gives so much life to this interior helps break up the monotony of the sea of black you can see the power function here on the seat no lumbar on this one but uh I do also want to call out these floor mats. Oh my goodness, yes, I like them a lot. Really like the contrasting stripes on them as well, but you get that green and the Onyx Edition logo there in the middle. And then hopping in to get away from the road noise, it's a quiet cabin, uh, but uh, very roomy and spacious in here for sure. And I do want to start here on the door. So we do get more contrasting gray, dark gray and light gray uh, StarTex material here on the side and contrasting green stitching all the way across. I really like it. He, you can't put too much of this in here for me. You do get auto up and down on the front windows, but not on the back windows. Your lock and lock and your mirror controls are right there. Moving over to the side just above my knee, you can see there is your hatch button right there. And then uh, you've get, got your dome lights, a blank panel, which is interesting, but this is not the top trim and your brightness control for your uh, gauges. And then a little bit of storage here. So you could probably put a phone, parking tickets, whatever you need up here. Just a nice little option for storage up here. But I'm actually gonna reach across and put my foot on the brake and give this one a start. And typical Subaru startup, you get your chimes, your Starlink infotainment. This is the 11.6 inch screen, but typical Subaru interface up front here. If you've been in a Subaru, you know what you're getting. Very busy steering wheel, but everything is at your fingertips right here from your radio controls to your adaptive cruise control, even your heated steering wheel. So I like that very much. This does have paddle shifters for the Lineartronic CVT. So it does have a simulated eight speed function to it, but um, it is still a continuously variable transmission. Typical analog gauges with the little helper screen here in the middle. And then your vertical uh, oriented Starlink system here. I, I like it, it's nice. You can see down here are all your controls for your climate controls. You can turn it on and off right there. This one has three mode heated front seats, but again, they're not perforated, so they are not ventilated. You can see we do have tri-zone climate in this, so both of the front passengers get their own climate and the back seat gets their own as well like this system and then moving down we get a little storage right here USB-A, USB-C auxiliary input there a mechanical gear selector that when you put in reverse does actuate the rear view camera on this one and then we can put it back in drive and there is uh, the rest of your screen it just kind of goes back to your normal mode there but while I was in reverse, I did want to show you this does have X mode with snow and dirt, normal and deep snow and mud. So that was one quick way to get to that X mode screen. But uh, typical Subaru Starlink infotainment there. No camera button down here to access the cameras in this one. So 
uh, really getting to that reverse camera is going to be either from putting it in reverse or going through the infotainment screen. Four and a half cup holders, very large electronic parking brake button there. A single tier opening storage, but we do get this removable felt lined piece here. With some parts for some change, some partitions for some change. No power in here, so no need for these channels here because you're not going to be plugging your phone on the inside. And then the passenger also gets a little bit of extra storage here in the dash, carried over, like I said, from over my left knee. Just a great road trip feature to have some little extra storage up here. You can see all the storage in the door panels. You get the handheld area right there with storage and then some bottle storage down below. But yeah, these seats are very nice. And then the Onyx Edition does get this standard panoramic roof. And me at 510, even with this panoramic panoramic roof thanks to that large profile that we looked at outside i've got plenty of room in here i'm very comfortable in this it's a roomy airy interior and with this gray dark gray interior it doesn't feel like a coffin in here i'm actually quite impressed it is a good environment in here uh, in the front of the ascent but let's check out the back two rows as we move in to get into the back, I did want to call out this metallic black paint. I've got a metallic black on my daily driver and the daily driver I had before that. So I've had a metallic black car for 11 plus years and really appreciate the metallic black here. If you're gonna get black, might be the way to go. Looking inside here, we've got the seven seat model. So two seats up front, captain's chairs back here in the back can see there is a flip and fold function to get in the back there is also and i'll get into this a little bit more later but a little lever there to flip and fold the seat forward and slide it forward to get into that third row but we'll get more into that here in just a little bit because you can see this is your recline and this folds it completely flat so you can see there is a lot of lever action here on the side if you want to slide it forward and back, there is this lever underneath here as well. And those carpeted floor mats continue back here in the back with the accented stenching on them. No Onyx Edition badging here in the back. But let's hop in, close the door, take a look at the door, because while you don't get a sunshade in this massive second row window like this is huge this is like minivan huge very large window here let's see just because i'm here how far down it goes all the way so that's a big win back here in the back so no built-in sunshades but you do get a built-in cup holder up front here so i like that some more contrasting stitching back here so it's not just a sea of gray or black you do get a single map pocket on the back here and the back here, no dual stage like on the Legacy that we've tested earlier or the Outback. I did mention this has a tri-zone climate control, so here are your controls for that. USB-A and USB-C back here. A dead panel for what looks to be a cigarette style outlet there. Little light shining down in the footwell here. That will also illuminate your drop down cup holders back here for the second row passengers. So four cup holders and then two bottle holders in the door uh, for backseat passengers. So really you can get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight drinks in the second row alone. Speaking of these second row chairs, you do get full down center armrests that do ratchet and stay in place wherever you have them. So you can put them in just the right position for you. And they are very nice. You can see, I'll try and do my best to show, we've actually got a raised section here on the floor. So these chairs, even though they look like they're sitting directly on the floor, uh, when it comes to your foot space, it's not so much the case. So I actually feel swing this around like I'm sitting in a normal chair. This is a very comfortable riding position. Again, I've got a nice bit of room. You can see it is a little tighter back here with the sunroof. I can't adjust the height of this seat, but I, I'm comfortable back here. And then I can recline quite a bit so I can get very comfortable. I've got a great view out of that panoramic roof up above me because you can see just how far the roof opens. I like that the sunshade and the front panel will open at the same time. 
kind of saving some time just because that typically those roller shades take a while uh, to roll back into place but I can get fairly comfortable back here in the second row and because we have the captain's chairs you could climb through the center section but I'm actually going to open the door climb out and flip and fold the seat forward the way Subaru intended you can see just pull up on that leather lever uh, both of these captain's chairs do have top tethers on the back for child seat installation and I pointed out earlier when we were looking at the cargo area that you can put the uh, seat belts into these little holsters here uh, to get them out of the way. So if you did have a child seat in place and you didn't want to trip over that getting into the back seat, you can do that right there. But I really like that this is on both of the seats. Uh, they aren't child seat friendly. If you had a child seat in place because the seat back leans forward a little bit, it it's not going to work, but it you can still slide it forward but climbing in to the back seat i don't know if you remember uh, when i pulled them up they are upright very upright and are not very comfortable in this position this is not how you would want to sit but you can see the headrests definitely need to be raised for anybody to sit back here and i'm going to go ahead and pull the lever and get that at least a little more reclined we do have a third seat belt here that comes down and attaches for uh, the third seat here in the back of the ascent. But with the seat reclined all the way, uh, I'm comfortable. I could ride back here. My hat is touching the roof, but it's fairly comfortable back here. It's not a penalty box as far as overall comfort, but again, with the seat recline like this, you're not going to get much luggage back behind me. I do want to call into attention the roof mounted vents, both here and in the second row. I like that as an option. And then looking over here, we do have two more cup holders on either side, but I don't see any power back here per se for rear seat passengers. So again, uh, some more cup holders over there on that side. So what looks to be three on that side and two on the driver's side. So five more cups back here. And then let's pull the seat forward thanks to this little handy handle right here. And you can see as it comes and sits and rests, uh, I've got my knees in the back of it. it. It is a tight third row seat, but livable if need be for a full size adult. And you can negotiate with the two people in front of you as to whether or not that is the right amount of room. But I'm gonna pull this strap and sit the seat more upright and see, yeah, uh, again, my body type, I, I'm typical average male, 5'10", but you know, some people are more torso and or more leg, but even more upright, I could ride back here. I wouldn't wanna make a cross country trip back here. So again, going back to my friends that have one of these that bought a Thule roof rack, you're going to want additional storage so that you can recline these seats back here if you've got people riding back here. Otherwise, you've got an ample amount of room with these third row seats folded. They're really kind of more bonus seats, but that's a little bit par for the course in this size class. Just know what you're getting into. Again, a huge thanks to Jeremy Jones and the team at Pelche Subaru here in Tyler, Texas for allowing me to look at this Onyx edition for you today. If you want to see me drive one of these, you, you want to see me review one of these with my family, what this is like, uh, be sure and let me know in the comments down below. I'll share those with Subaru. Hopefully we'll get one for a week's worth of testing. See what this thing is capable of off-road as well. Who knows? But leave some comments down below. You can find us on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, all at GT Garage Talk, or you can just head on over to gtgaragetalk.com. Our Facebook account is getting very close to hitting 50,000 followers. We just crossed 45,000 not that long ago. So help us reach that 50,000 mark. Go find us on Facebook. Give us a follow. We're always posting fun content there. And for the entire month of January, from the 3rd to February 3rd, we're in a new vehicle each and every day. We'd really like you along for the ride. So hit the subscribe button, follow, ring the bell, whatever you have to do to comment and engage with us to let the algorithms know to show you more of our content as we move forward. We've got some fun stuff coming up with the Houston Auto Show, North Texas Auto Show, and a vehicle premiere that may or may not be in this size and price and 
overall vehicle class, so you haven't even seen it yet, but you know, be sure and follow along because we really want to have you along for the ride as we grow uh, this year in 2023. As for me in the back of this three row Subaru Ascent Onyx Edition, until next time, gearheads, bye. It is warm.